All right, well, thank you for joining me. I'm very happy that we're together to do practice. I've been hoping for this, this sequence and, and I re-examined kind of the, the, set, the set I did the other day and, and came up with this pattern. So we're gonna kind of dig right into it. And there is a centering of the pelvis and the lift of the knees to kind of get into this abdominal um, balance, right? Abdominal wall, wall moving from the organs, um, diaphragmatic kind of reset. So I want you to sit sacrum in front of the short end of the bolster. And when you line up your blocks under your legs, really kind of stuff them in so you get a feel of that height of the legs. So that would mean it feels as if my knees are lifted, but my soles of the feet connecting, even though it might not be the whole inner line of the foot, you can feel the outer edge of the foot on the floor. And then as you don your belt over and around your low back, you're going to take that belt loop so it's wide. Right? It's pretty big. You can always make it smaller. So you might as well start with a really big loop. Buckle is you know, to the side so it won't get around your feet. And then I would take that belt and you're gonna twist it, right? And if you don't like the twisting idea, just don't twist, okay, that's it. That's the only thing, your choice is now. The belt is crossed, I have a cross belt. It's kind of between my feet. It's about the line a little bit below at my shins, my calves, that area, that's where the crossing is. Now, if I tighten this down, that crossing is gonna kind of stay in limbo, right in that space. There's a, a mild twist on my belt. It's not going to interrupt my practice. But I suppose when you lift up your legs and the, the setting is sort of simple, it's pretty high. We're gonna start with this motion, a little bit of twisting pattern. So I want you to turn to your right side first. So you're gonna turn right, bring your left hand to that right knee and feel that right hand reach back on the blanket. And can you create that reach with your left hand and pull yourself around the vertebral column. So you're working your ribs to turn, you're strengthening in the inhale through the lungs. And then exhale, turn forward, but keep the rotation, kind of keeping through the mid body. So it's like a turnstile. You're gonna to turn to the left, you're gonna hold the right, the left, the right, the left knee when you go left. And when you rotate, you're feeling where can you move from the organs, not just that structural presence that you kind of look at the screen to follow, but you're letting your eyes relax in their sockets and centering the lift of your in-breath and relaxing on your out-breath. Try to lift up in the abdominal wall, noticing how you create that tone. And then the simplicity of this is to turn back forward, relate from your breath to movement, round your back so you have a little bit of a cat spine, head moves its weight forward. So the spine and the top where it's very mobile and your cervical vertebrae is in motion. And then when your hands are on the knees, you're gonna lower onto your back on the bolster and center the blocks so that they are causing a condition for comfort for the legs to be quite supported. And then we'll take our sand across or lengthwise on the ribs. So across or from heart to belly, you choose. And if it feels a little bit kind of slopey and droopy when it goes across, then you would just switch it up. So it's lengthwise, okay? So we're gonna settle in from that kind of abdominal rotation pattern. And the importance here is to let your tone and your belly relax. So the belly is a space where we want to feel some calm and some neutral, behavior with our breathing. So not to be a little, not to be too excited about your belly breathing. Let your arms flow back behind you. The arms are apart. They're not connecting at the hands, but you'll feel 
that relative reach through the ribs, through the shoulders, and sample movement, sample motioning your arms out and straight back. And then I suggest you let your arms simply relax beside you, hands resting the backs of the wrist on the ground and associate with that inhale, filtering the air through the nose and feeling that large awareness in your core that's been developing for the last couple minutes. So can you center the midsection of the body and center that correlation of the breath in flowing and how the diaphragm has to descend, it moves down. It doesn't have to, but it's going to. So you're encouraging that pace and length of inhale. And now as you exhale, right, you're working really against that gravitational flow when you're in a supine position. So it's a nice neutral yet slightly interesting place to align your breath. So I want you to come into this first pose of a couple minutes and you be Curious if your arms are going to stretch a little bit farther out. So the shoulders feel that certainty, that openness at the branch of the collarbone out where it touches to the shoulder of the humerus, where it touches all the way out into your shoulder, meaning the arm the humerus moves down. And that chest space tries to branch out which could be fun to do to stretch your arms a little farther open. Now the head relaxes, but if you're curious about letting your head nod very subtle side to side, I encourage it now to feel where your head turning so subtle right to left. Feel if there is a pressure in the neck or if it feels fairly mobile and then experiencing where the arms are at ease. Return to the effective breathing, coming into this practice. This is a practice where you begin feeling your body getting into the present easily and getting the mind into the present is a, can be a little bit of an obstacle in practice. So we're gonna keep performing our breath and the poses and see if the mind can kind of saunter into that present moment self-care state. Now with a few more moments here, inhale for four, feel that rise of the sand. Exhale for five counts. It's pretty interesting to focus on that inhale because you have the sense of that you're trying to move the sandbag up towards the ceiling, but your focus right now really is inhale, abdominal pressure moves down, diaphragm, belly expands, and then exhale, centering back in. So play with those two states of awareness, the lifting, the strengthening of the diaphragm, the movement of it as well, as it's going downwards, right, on the in-breath, and then it guides back up to the space at the base of the heart. So continue any of those frames of focus as we continue along here. You're gonna slide your hands in close to your blocks, and then I want you to feel where the sand still remains, and can you guide your feet closer to your groin? So you are stretching through the inner thighs and the groins to begin. But now if I move my blocks out and they're not under my legs and I try to move my knees open, how does that experience in your legs, but also your pelvis? So the pelvic basin is quite centered. It's pretty thick right in this beginning pose. So we, 
unbuckle. If you can't quite figure out where the buckle is, slide the feet in and then see if you can maneuver your way out of that belt around your feet and bring your knees to point up. Stretch the hands, interlacing your fingers together. And as you bind the hands with that interlace, you're gonna turn your palms towards the back of the space. Reach behind you, flow through the ribs. Feel the thick back rib center and slightly arch. And then balance your core. You're gonna kick the right foot forward and lift and cross it to the left knee and feel the right knee trying to adjust moving open. You might need your hands to help you get that leg up and over. You might need to bring your arms besides you on the floor to balance the leg muscles to move. So it's all a little bit of an exploration. Now, as I release the grip of the hands, I'm gonna use a ball or I'm gonna prefer the ball, but you could use a block at the very upper outer left side. And then lean your body weight into that ball or block and hold the right knee now here is where the decision lies. Are you gonna stay with your sand or if you already lost it? If you've lost it, that's fine. You can always slide it away. There's no, no rule, there's no sand rule at all. It's rarely, rarely do I add it in here. I'm adding it so we're doing quite a bit of core very soon. And I want you to have this area kind of tacked back. So you don't have any tacks, you're not tacking the body, literally, but you are feeling, I mean, T-A-C-K, not attack, but keeping the back pressed into the bolster and then strengthen that circulation into your right hip. Hold that right knee, send your right arm back besides your head and feel where there's a reach with that right arm. Breathing. Now we're kind of venturing into this series of sequencing and circulation, noticing the elongation of the front space in the core to the upper body and that awareness into your hip. Now change sides, be rather specific about it. So both arms may be back or both hands besides your hips either is great. And lower your right foot, switch left foot to right knee. Now, when you move that ball to the upper right thigh, you're going to lean your body weight into that ball or block. Hold on to the left knee. I have to admit the sandbag is a little different to add here. It seems sometimes limiting with your breathing when you have the weight on you. So you have to kind of be proactive on breathing, not let it get you down. And that left arm stretches back. So feature, slow, deep breaths. They don't have to be fast, but it's useful to deepen the inhalation, so it's slow. And relax on the out breath. You know, noticing the hips, we're going to unwind from this side and windshield wiper the leg. So take the left arm down, Bring that left foot off of the right leg, move the ball. And then I'm going to take the sand aside for now. And then windshield wipe for the legs, but feeling when I kind of coast side to side, if you can feel the motion of your ribs centered on your bolster. I know, again, that idea of them tacked down. So when I motion side to side with my legs, I have to move my feet out a little farther than hips distance. And then my hips slide slightly down. They aren't completely attached to my bolster backing as much as they were when I started. But kind of get a situation here where your knees go a good 10 to 15 times, a few more before we come up. And I want you to place that block now so it's between the knees. 
can't windshield wiper with a block between your knees very easily. So that's the, that's the end of the windshield wiper. Now, when you squeeze into the ball or block, it could be either. Um, we're going to take the arms so that they are holding the legs. And then when you do the path of moving forward, I want you to get a feel of your head lifting. Maybe your hands behind your head. That's completely fine if that's better for you. I want you to hold that lift, whether you hold the back of your head or your legs. Sample. So if I'm at the back of my head, I'm really below the occipital. Uh, ridge, right? I'm at the very bit, kind of the base near the brainstem with my hands, or I prefer the legs. And then as I come up, I'm going to keep my low, low back, low, low backs. So it's really centered back towards the bolster, where I feel that the belly kind of pooches up at that spot. And then I'm going to slide my feet forward and forward and then squeeze the block and come up to sitting. Now stay with that pattern of the block center and I want you to slide your feet a little farther forward and bring your arms up. Good. So get a feel here of just that simplicity of the lift and where there is the possibility of intra-abdominal motion lifting up. Okay, so we're going to take off the belt and I want you to move your bolster. I just reach back and turn it across. That seems to work pretty good. You can sit on the blanket that's on top of the bolster. You just turn it like this. You can get rid of your block so you can make this a little easier. Um, this is one option. My preference, because I'm short, is that I have my blanket on top of my rolled up blanket on the other side. I just kind of use that for a couple reasons for the reach of my arm. It's a little higher than, than both being flat. But if you have some challenge, let's say when you sit up in some of these upcoming poses, get a little more height under your seat, just a blanket could do, as long as it's really pressed onto the bolster and not too, um, too flimsy. So let's arrive. We're sitting up on top of the bolster, right in the center. The legs extending forward, kind of shake them out. And then we'll take a block, for certain a block on this between the hands. And when you lift up, you want to look down to your feet and can you flex your feet, feel the motion of the heels like they're kind of scrubbing the floor, right? They're scrubbing your mat. And then when you flow your arms up, there is kind of this image, there, there's this balance of your knees bending and your elbows bending both. Now, the block is only between the hands. So when I bend my elbows further back with my hands holding the block between them, the block is at this wide setting. I want you to let your rib center back. So if they're kind of pushing forward with that spinal arch, I want you to place the weight down to your sitting bones. If this is really challenging for you, you might need to cross the legs. Right, so the challenge here is now I'm going to bring my hands holding my block, trying to move my block as close to my back as I can. My helmet, right, so my elbows are on the sides of my head. I'm really trying to squeeze in. Okay, now the ribs, you can notice that I have, there's a challenge with me to get my ribs centered back. So maybe that is occurring for you. So that intra abdominal lift, I want you to keep that abdominal wall motioning up. Okay, now stretch the arms up, lengthen back through the heels, and then take that block down. And I want you to cross that left leg up over the right. So it's really a simple crossing. Okay, the right leg is extending forwards. Okay, so get a feel here. Can you hold? Hands interlaced below that left knee, right around the upper shin, right? And you're going to lift up. You're going to pull your body so there's a sense of moving up the spine. And what does that feel like? Is it, it's not a slouching back. It's an elevation up to the crown of your head. And we'll turn to our left. So we're going to start with a twist again. And we're going to rotate to that left side so that 
right elbow hooks to the outer left leg and I want you to rotate so the balance of your back muscles is balancing in the ribs, which are clearly muscles between the ribs, the intercostals. So kind of notice when you twist to your left, how the right arm pushing creates that strengthening sensation, which is like, it's not your hand pushing, it's your elbow. And for most of us, the elbow can do that. Maybe not our wrist, so forth, pushing down, but our elbow can help us turn. So I want you to feel that rotation and then let the head that's kind of bobbed on top of the spine maybe turn a little right and left, maybe tilt your head to the side. And then as your head is centered, close your eyes and layer a few more moments here at the twist. Intra-abdominal pressure is a highlight in this position, right? That massage for the organ. So there's not a lot of flexibility occurring as much as there's a combination of strength, lungs and core, and that massage for the abdominal muscles and the organs. Yeah, it's an interesting area to focus on the abdominal muscles. So when we come back forward, uncross, we're gonna take that left foot and place it on the inside of the right leg and move the right leg open, okay? So what I'm gonna reset here is to get my sand now, and I'm gonna place it on the inner left thigh, okay? So take a ball or a block under that left leg, either is fine. Keep that reach out with that right leg, and then here, you can either use a ball or a block and you can reach out besides the right leg, stretch the left arm over the side. The ball's kind of fun to try for this. If you have one of these grippy balls with a nub on them, it's kind of fun. But the block would be a little bit more concrete, right? You could put your elbow on that and then land with that balance for the waist stretch. So get that feel of that side band, of that left side waist, lengthening, reaching, continuing that experience of motion from the belly button out to the rib ridge, and then turn your head down to the right leg. Okay, now feel if breath allows you to Experience a little more contour in your ribs, a little bit more of that rib expansion. And then come back on up and we're gonna take a seated forward hip opener. So take the right foot, cross it in front of that left shin and then move your sand to the right thigh and take a block set. I'm going to use my ball under my left leg here in front so the stretch through the arms is even, although the hip on that right side is getting a little bit more rotation, external hip rotation. So feel that right foot. So it's enough in front of the left leg that you're kind of revamping the circulation around the, the whole contour of the knee and then you're putting a little impact into your right hip, weight bearing with the sand. So get a feel here, continue with that. So you're in a right cross-legged forward bend. Get a feel for the muscles in the low back waistline, right? So this whole kind of lower contour down to the band of the hip. So when you're leaning forward, can your spine have some motion, right? The back muscles can round and arch. The centering into that right hip. You can walk your blocks over to the top left corner. You can keep them straight in front of you. You can lower the block tight or bring your hands to the floor. 
Give it a few more moments. Now, if the weight of your head can contribute here for a moment, let your head lower down. And then move your blocks to the front for all. And we'll take Baddha Konasana, which is the cobbler's pose. Hands move up on the legs above the knees and then press down. So when you come up, you're going to bring your soles of your feet together like we were earlier and bring your sand onto the feet. So the feet together, the knees open. Okay, feel your, your cobbler's pose. Notice the connection to the ankles. The sand purpose is not to keep the inner ridge of the foot together, it's to open up the foot, right? Cobbler's pose, eventually as you open up the feet, right? Cobbler. So I'm gonna use that sand to try to persuade them. And then you'll work to leaning forward. Yeah, this one can take some energy out of the pelvis, the hips, the low back. It certainly um, pulls the, the back muscles longer, the low back, but try to reach forward so your spine is lengthening versus rounding, right? So this might mean your blocks are higher, and it might mean that you don't lean forward very far, but you have your hands on your bolster and you're sitting up tall. So there's a few different ways you can work with this position. Okay, so find that intra-abdominal awareness. So if you're kind of feeling your belly dropping, feel that your feet push together and draw that line of energy through the legs, the inner legs, through the groins. And this is something I'm going to come up with, um, come back, come to when we do legs up today. So the whole groin space, not to try to grip that area, the groins, but to actually try to soften so the lymph drain is better. So we want to increase that flow of lymph in the groins. There's a high lymph node count in that space. So instead of kind of clenching, see if you can find the base areas like your feet or your upper body when we're upside down, taking all the, the flow, like that's the, the end of the chain, right? It's the feet on this one. So when my knees are out, I am trying to work my knees open. I'm not trying to harden the groin, so I'm trying to kind of flow out with the legs. Sometimes they're shaky, right? That, that's why it's oftentimes called butterfly pose. And we'll take the sand, put it on the top of the thighs as we push both feet straight in front, so extend through the legs. Take a moment, arms up, notice your back. If your back is getting tired right now, this is something to notice if you're even using your core to activate your center muscles in your practice. Are you doing any of that? Now is the time to notice if you're getting tired in your center. Change sides. So we're gonna take the sand off. We're gonna cross the right leg up and cross the foot to the other side of the left leg and take a twist to the right side. So bring the left arm, reach over to the right side, like you're trying to look through space, like you're swinging the arm across, get the best swing you can. And that's gonna open up through the back, but it's interesting rotator cuff motion too, if you think about some of these. They're, they're all kind of related. Now when I turn right, I have my left arm tone, my left side of my back is stretching, but my abdominal organs, right, get probably, you know, 75% of the work. The rest is into the back. So turn the waist, feel that right knee kind of clutched in. If it doesn't work for you to hook your elbow, hug your leg in with your left hand and let your head turn, tilt your head and neck to stretch the neck or feel the head gently turn. Flex through that left foot, push through the heel, scrub the heel forward on the left leg. Inhale deep. Exhale, come back to center and bring the right foot on the inside of the left leg. 
Stretch the left leg though out. So you have to recenter that position. Center yourself up so you get the feel of your sitting bones. And then take a sandbag to the top of that left thigh. And when that sandbag is to that leg, can you get a feel here of the grounding and the rooting through that sandbag to the hip? And then you're going to use, I think the block was a good idea on this one. Use that block outside the left leg and then tilt your hand to reach with the block, turn your ribs to the right and center your right arm up and over the side of the face. You're not required to use a sandbag on the leg for this. If you don't have one or if it just doesn't feel supportive, you can always shift it away. It can be quite routine for some of us to have that sand. So my right arm reaches, my waist is stretching through. Breathe. Feel if you can continue that core strength. Okay, you can lower your right arm behind your back and then slide your block in on that left side. Come up, bring the left foot, cross it in front of the right shin. Change the sand to that left thigh. So again, if you didn't have sand on that right leg for the last post down, you might add some weight on the left leg. And then use any props you might need under your knees. Since the left hip is the stretch position for the hip joint, the left leg, the block or ball under that right knee would be ideal. And then I lean forward, so I try to let my body weight drop into the position. And if your right leg comes to the floor easily, you don't have to put something under it. But if it causes you a little bit of kind of inner challenge with your hip joint, you would use something under your leg to support because we want the legs to be as level with the pelvis as we can bring them. That's why we're sitting on height. And, you know, if you're really mobile in your joint and you could get your knee down, it still might be beneficial for your joints to have support. So you want to have some nice structural kind of leeway between balance and flexibility and stability. So stretch forward, let your back gradually open. Can you feel your hip? You can feel your lower back muscles. Let your head gently move forward. Right, there's further to go. So we're kind of at that center of the experience right here, we've kind of landed in the body, but the mind may still take a little time to be convinced, or maybe this is when it wanders. This has been a fairly challenging sitting set so far. We're about to lie into the side, so. Comfort is on its way. Now, if the blocks were to the right, or you haven't tried taking them over, take them over. If that's a little much on your back or your hip, keep them forwards. Now, as you come back to centered and sitting, I want you to center back your sand. I would put it over to the left for today. Um, and then when you lower down, uncross, get a feel of that feet together without any sand or any belt. Just find the feet together. And then can you keep those knees buoyant? Okay, they're slightly lifting. And slide the hands down to the ankles, hold on around the feet and notice the ankle on each side if they're similar, if there's one that has a little more pressure or tightness or stiffness would be what happens often with the ankles. 
So this is a great pose to work on that, on stiffness of the ankles, right? Usually your feet are kind of in their, their coffins during the day often, right? So it's good to get them out and stretch the ankles. And we've done a good amount of it today with the feet so far, haven't we? Yeah. So now when we come down, I want you to take a, a Navasana, a boat pose with no props. So we'll try. We're going to lower our seat down in front of the bolster. I do have a bolster behind me, so it has this illusion of help. Navasana is to actually lift up the feet, right, and move them forward. So you're going to hold the legs because you got hands. That's not considered a prop, huh? And then feel your body lean back a little into your bolster, or a lot, admittedly so. And then feel if you can get your feet to lift up. Now, when the feet lift up, the intra-abdominal pressure gets a little bit more intense, right? But it pressurizes that core. So when you start to lower down your feet, I want you to move your chest forward. Inhale. Right? So the diaphragm moves down right now because you're sitting upright. It's easy to get that to move. There's no challenge with that. Exhale, lean back, kick the feet up. Inhale, feet down, center forward. Exhale, lean back, kick the feet up. Let's do it one more time for fun. Inhale, center forward. And exhale, even if the exhale doesn't feel like relaxation. Now feel that grip back of the legs. It's like they're, they're actually, there's a life force there. There's a resistance. So when you lower your feet, you're going to get the ball and maybe a block because you might need that too. And I want you to roll to your left side. We're going to take side stage on the left hip down, but we're going to add a blanket. So we'll have a little more style on this one today. So you're going to take a blanket, stack one on top of your bolster. Okay. And then when you lift, um, We'll just let your body lean into it for now. You're gonna take your second blanket, unroll it, so it's in, a, it's in a quarter fold, and you're gonna put a block under it, okay? So you want some height. Let's say you have a bunch of blankets you brought to your practice space. You could wad up some blankets and a pillow, another pillow if you have. So a ball is on the inside of my right leg. If you have a block instead, use that, and then Yes, you're trying to get your ribs that you've been toning for the last 10 minutes to elongate. So I want more lift. So now my ribs, you know, if you look at like a skeletal rib cage, right? They are very fluid, right? When you lie on their side. So so are you. So you're going to try to get this abdominal stuff, stop abdominal motion over that bolster and blanket. Whew. And then I drop into the blanket under my head. I'm going to need a block, I think, overhead, because I got one under my head. So that's where it went. I was mystified for a second. Accountability of all props. So I found that using the height on the block is good, a little bit higher for my shoulder. So and this is often taught with a chair, under, a chair seat under your hand. So you can imagine it's a little higher. So having that height of the, of the block is not too much, right? So uh, if the breath feels a little bit choppy just to get the ribs this far stretching out, take some time to align. Yeah, as the intercostal muscles become more elastic, the ribs move better, right? More lung power, increasing that circulation into the lungs. If there's anything that's not comfortable right now for you, maybe your arm doesn't like to be there, relax it behind you or besides you and feel the weight of your head Find where it's most comfortable for your head and neck. And try to start there, because these whole side areas are so uh, viscous, like as far as the circulation there, it's a little more fluid than it would be in your neck. That's a pretty concentrated and sometimes really challenged space. So let that be the important place to relax. 
If your eyes can close, we'll be here for several more moments. No surprise change in instruction. As long as you can keep seeing me teach, that's good. That's what we're hoping for. And get a feel for that right leg stretching back. Kind of move a little back and your waist gently feel that circulation and your right arm relaxing on the side. Closing your eyes, letting your head rest into the blanket. Breathe slow. You know, the sand could be on your hip, it could be on your ribs. Once you find a few moments there, you might notice that the rib expression, the costal breathing is slightly challenged. To get that to actually have a little more expansiveness. Even though you, you can address these areas to get a richer, fuller, more dedicated breath flow into the upper lungs or the side body. It's still a challenge once you kind of set into it. It's a, it's a pretty deep internal kind of struggle if you, if you focus on it. So find where it's enjoyable and you accept where you're at with it because it only improves when you accept each time you're in there focusing and then you start to get stronger in these areas. I think part of it's your state of um, your nervous system can fluctuate between parasympathetic and sympathetic without too much um, anxiety. I think that's one thing we work with the breathing is what happens later when you're not in yoga. Okay, now we're going to come into a little layer of movement um, in a slightly prone state. So that would mean we're towards the floor with our hands and knees. So I want you to move that sand aside and you kind of twist to get that, you kind of wrangle around, but when you come around, I want you to bring the right leg to the left leg and then it's a bit of a twist, right? To come to hands and knees, but we'll take our uh, bolster. We're just gonna stack it up on top of that other piece. Okay, on the other side. And I know it's not steady. You're not gonna balance on that, I promise. It's just out of the way. Okay, hands under shoulders. And then as you reach forward, I want you to actually lengthen into up dog. So I've got no support uh, underneath my hip. So it's a deeper stretch in my, my hip flexors here. Now feel that arch in the spine and then come back to a child's pose, round your back, chin to chest, and then reach your hips back towards your feet and stretch your arms, but I feel a stretch around the legs, around the knees, and then the low back. Head down. Take the hands out a little wider. Now round your back to come up, feel the back of the neck, and then you're gonna come forward. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, head bows down, and we reach the hips back, and we extend through the arms. Keep it really simple here, simple-minded, simple flow. One more time, feel the back of your head as if it's pushing forward. You're not pressing into your neck, but you're feeling the weight of your head down. You're reaching through the torso. Fingers could turn out like a seal. That's really helpful for the wrist often not to have the fingers forward, but to actually turn them out. So they're completely turned out like so. Okay, last time. Okay, and then as you get a feel for coming back into center, fingers are gonna either turn a little bit out. I like index finger forward, toes under, lift up the knees, stretch the heels down to the floor into downward dog. 
Let the arms really set the focus on reaching fuller, longer, farther apart for the feet. Feel the hips reach back. Feel the abdominal organs center. It's good to get them upside down now. And then we're going to walk all the way back. You can take feet a little forward, hands a little bit back till you meet in Uttanasana. Standing forward full, inversion, head below the heart. Clutch the back of the legs, either behind your uh, knees or your calves, holding onto that space, or the consideration of holding your elbows is the most popular I found is that contribution to traction in your sides. So let your head go down, let your eyes relax, feel that feature of in and out breath. Now, when the arms lower down and you feel the, the position of the legs, I want you to feel your feet a little bit farther apart. I don't know exactly your spacing on your feet, so maybe you were already there, wider than hips distance. So a little wider than hips distancing. Feel the sitting bones reaching back and tall, right? As if that's the top of your pose is your sitting bone. So there's a lot of leg regeneration in this position, lots of leg zone. Now when I stretch my arms forward, I'm going to reach forward, bend the knees, and then I want you to come all the way to standing. I'll be a little out of view, but you're reaching your arms up and back. Inhale and exhale. <sighs> Relax the spine, the head, the neck. You can feel how one more uh, motion just right here and now, letting the load of your head, this position, stretches your back. Now we're not all the same with the blood pressure. So some of you might find this is alarming, right? To go into this pattern. So if it is, remember, you don't have to follow any of it or all of it, just take what works for you. And then I progress to my ribs arching and hands forward. I like a little bit of hands forward, feet back, knees down to come to all fours. I find that to be quite useful. And then stretch the left arm forward over the blanket, right? So you gotta have that amount of lift. This is, a, this is a measurement tool right now for your balance. Right leg back, left arm forward. Okay, try to keep that balance. And then lower the left hand and right knee down. And keep the hands in that open state. And then switch left leg back. Okay, feel the balance in the hands, the work through the midsection. And then as you reach your right arm forward, can you press back into your left heel, neutralize into the hips. So feel that lower abdominal band lift up. So you're almost creating that cat spine right now. So avoid arching the back and letting your ribs really drop and your belly drop, that's what I mean. And try to get some lift in the back as if there's a sandbag here and you're trying to lift it. Okay, left heel reaches and then right hand comes down, round your back into cat, chin to chest. Really lift up the back, good. And then neutral spine. Okay, take your bolster back to where it was next to you. And then when you're here, you're gonna to turn to your right hip down, side stage, left leg back, and then get the waist, get the thick rib space onto that blanket and bolster. Get a ball under your left leg and then add some sand. Okay, so. We're kind of getting into this part of the practice before we get into more inversions. So when you're kind of finalizing the pose set, notice that left arm is over. Is it different on your second side with your arm and the shoulder joint? Just notice. It, it might not be a flexibility rhythm. It might be it fatigues faster on one side. There are so many different factors 
and why there's differences, this is a good time to take note. It could be a weakness in one side of your back as well. So I just really enjoy a yoga practice in my life because I can find when I get into the practice after a good 45 minutes, you might start to mentally become plugged into your kind of psychosomatics a little bit and noticing where the, the strengths lie and where your challenges and things to address to become a little more centered and whole. So take it the pose here, you're in side sage, left arm is overhead or it's open. It could also be down by your side. Okay, get a feel for the reach. Take a few more moments. In time, it ought to feel like it's kind of sloughing off. It almost doesn't necessarily feel itchy, but you can feel that things are moving, shifting in the side. So I sometimes find if I touch the left side of my neck with my right hand, I can tell when it gets to tension. So this is pretty good with the arm straight back, but if I open out too far, it really starts to trigger right into that circulation on that left side of the neck. The levators, right? Those can get a little bit uh, wonky. So when we bring the left arm back on down, you might do a full circle of the arm and then come back into the ribs. And as you come up, I want you to go with that spiral first. So we're left knee to right knee. So a spiral in the spine and then turn, right? So you're twisting towards your bolster. If you kind of already come up, try this again, come back. So you're taking it easy. Take off the blanket, that was fun and then take off the block from underneath the blankie, and then let's move the other block, okay? We're all still with it, I hope. Looks like it. So when we put the blanket at the back, I want you to get a feel here for when you turn to sit up on the bolster that you're on the edge of the bolster. That tailbone is at the edge. So it's almost like you're in that boat pose again, like you're kind of almost challenge with your stomach. So get a feel here where you have all your props nearby. The sand is important, the ball, the blocks. Now when you lower down on your back, I want you to soften the groins. This is the big part of it is, <clears throat> clearly I took a class yesterday. <laughs> so rather than Tightening and toning in the groins. Um, we're not with the sandbag yet, so you kind of have to find how you're going to get there with this. So we're not trying to grip there. I want you to let the movement of length flow and flush. So one way we'll start with this is we have the legs lifting. And I want you to get a feel of your knees softening. And then start to let the legs shift a little bit back towards your chest. So it's upward facing, right, forward bend. We just did forward bend recently with our feet below us. And now this is just the different facing uh, forward bend. We're on the bolster. We're still doing the same muscles, but it isn't the same in the legs necessarily. Identical to that first phase. So as you move your legs towards you, I want you to find that fulcrum point of balance. Separate the legs so there's a little separation at the knees. Relax the feet so they just basically float. Soften the knees. Okay. Now reach around to find your belt. 
And we're going to get the leg muscles to kind of notice some of these balancing points um, of interaction with the thigh circulation before we get into our sandy feet pose. Okay, so keep it simple. You're going to bend through both of them and then take your belt under your right foot and kick it up. Okay, hopefully your belt is in a loop, but if it's not, you got to buckle up again. It's just the way it goes. Buckle up, you got your belt into a loop. Now, as I stretch that right leg up, I'm going to lower the left foot and stretch it straight down through the thigh. And I would hope that in this position, you could give this one a try with your sand on the top of your left thigh. So if you have a sandbag, put it on your left thigh and kind of keep oriented. Um, we've all done this before, this pattern, but we, we generally kind of look forward to the brain float part. So I want you to try to keep your left heel reaching straight down through the heel, like the heels kind of making a, a scrubbing into the floor. And then as you're pulling with your hands, try to lift up through that right leg, reach, reach, reach through the heel, get the belt around the center of your right foot. Okay, so notice the circulation in the groins here. Both sides, right? They're pretty interactive. Relax the left foot now, so it's relaxing. The foot might turn out. Relax a little through the top foot you're holding, and then use your arms to pull. Get the hands to walk up the belt as far as the back will allow the arms to stretch. Okay. And then hold the belt together with just your right hand and take the right leg open. Okay. All right, it's, it's half a upavista. So it's arda, which just means half upavista. You know, reach through that right foot. I know this is a challenging one. If you practice it some, semi-frequently, it really does get easier, this one. It's not so trembly. Actually, this sequence might be a good sequence, this half of it, before you take a walk, because the second layer at the end. So keep this in mind if you end up wanting to do something before a, a, a long, long walk to get the legs loosened up. So now as you bring the right leg back up, keep the tone with the hand on the belt, pull. Stretch the left arm back, reach it behind you, besides your head, pull firm with the right hand. Pull, pull, pull. Yeah, the head is relaxed this whole time. Okay, now we're gonna release that right side. Okay, so the right leg goes down. I would encourage you to have sand on both across the thighs, the thigh um, lid and then let the legs feel, feel the back muscles working. There's quite a bit here. Flex through your feet, push forward through the heels, change sides. So I just move my sand to my right thigh and then I bend the left knee and I pull in that leg with my hands, the knee that is. And then I reach around and see if I can get a foot. So try the best that you can to get a foot. And then as you lift up that leg, yeah, take the moments here with the hands. Um, if you are a, a brain float, you know, crave that a lot, you can always add it in. There's no reason why you can't. You could add the belt to the occipital um, bridge. It's up to you. I'm just trying to really focus on the legs right now. Lots of leg focus. So when you pull with your hands up, right, bolt, you're processing that circulation deep through the back of the pelvis because this makes it weight bearing. Do you feel that if you're holding onto your foot, you're pulling down, it really, you can feel that awareness kind of go into the upper left leg and kind of plug in. It's like it just plugged into, the, into its, its socket. Hold the belt with your left hand and take the left leg out. Now it goes straight out from the hip. It's not trying to go towards the, the back of the space or towards your shoulder. You're going straight out. Very simple and specific. 
Flex the foot, that's key, flex your foot. Right arm can go open. It doesn't have to be a specific spot. Breathing. Yeah, feel that balance through the left foot pushing, let the right heel reach. And then as you bring the left leg back up, hold with the left hand, send the right arm either back to kind of half cactus or behind you, find what's easy and relax the right foot and feel the awareness through that left And then point the knees towards the ceiling, knee pointing. Okay, so knees point towards the ceiling. Notice the, the flesh of the thigh, in inner thigh. Just notice if it's feeling gripping or if it's comfortable, hopefully comfy. And then we'll bring the knees to the chest. They flow in, we scoop up the sand, we toss it over our soles of our feet. Feet have some separation. Now when the legs flow up, I want you to, Really work on pushing away so that the knees, the, the circulation around the knee joint is stabilizing around the knee joint. So you're strengthening and then stretch the feet so the legs are essentially straight. You know, we're trying to get this into a, a vertical position. And usually when you're spotted on this one, if you have somebody critique you, <clears throat> It is almost always that the feet need to go a little farther forward. You generally seem to have this idea that it's straight, but they're actually a little tilted back. And you know, just noticing that will tend to hyperextend the knee anyway. So a tiny micro bend is great. And then feel that activation of the hamstrings. Little strength, a little stretch. Bring your arms to get your belt, and I want you to hold your belt overhead. Grasp a hold so it's a substantial width. Be generous. Open. Make it very comfortable for your chest and your shoulders here. So a, a width where your arms are really besides your blanket might be nice. And then come into the shape. Viparita Karani. Destination. You've arrived. Okay, this was actually the pose we were trying to work as our peak pose, even if it doesn't seem to be the most stressful of all of them. It's where the layers of movement were coming to. So the abdominal organs are centered and massaged. So the interesting part is the inversions really place the weight of the abdominal organs on the diaphragm. So during that inhalation, the diaphragm must lift them, right? So you're reversing the effects of gravity, the downward pull of gravity on the organs are the opposite of prolapse, right? This includes organs, right? You know, the bladder. It's quite interesting what this, this focus can be for the pelvic floor as well. Now take a few more moments here. If you enjoy the legs up and you want to add more time, you can. But for matters of time and getting everything in, we're going to shift on in a few seconds here. But feel that verticality of the legs. You might notice the knees bending, kind of coasting you out. But I want you to feel a few moments of this pose without the sand. So we bend the knees. I take care to make sure my hands aren't overhead if I drop my sand overhead. Okay. And then when my feet go up, right now I'm going to just let the feet relax apart, maybe circle through my ankles. If it's hard for you to keep your legs up, they just get really jittery. They're 
challenge, the hamstrings are challenged, you can put a belt also instead of this one, but this is good, uh, around the feet and then just push the knees um, apart. You can also have the belt around the feet, the ankles and move into a wide stance. This is really nice too, it's very supportive. The reason why this is a good one is it, it really calms the inner leg, right? So softens the groins, doesn't harden and tense that area. So that flow of length, you can reverse that gravitational flow to the um, move the blood from the extremities to the vital organs, which is very clear here. So as you bend your knees, you reach your hands to your belt, you slide your feet together, or you have your feet up without a belt. And we start to come out for a few moments. We have the knees bending. We have our hands. Um, I would go open and just let the knees go from side to side when you're still on the bolster, okay? So get this elevated reclining twist pattern. Yeah, so we started the session with the twist coming from our pelvis and up through our ribs. We did so many of those patterns that now our twists are coming from our hips down into our legs. I don't know which do you prefer. These feel a little bit more comfy when you're on your back moving side to side. So knees to chest, but they certainly help you strengthen your core body when you're doing that from sitting. And then when you slide down your bolster, you're gonna bring your knees in, push your bolster forward now so it's no longer under your, your tush. And I want you to put your feet on top of the bolster or on the floor, you choose. Place a ball or block between the knees. And then as you lift up your pelvis, you're gonna keep lifting. And it seems like you have to keep lifting to keep the hips up, the energy of I keep lifting is there. And let your arms turn the palms open down. Bring your arms overhead, inhale, keep the hips lifting, squeeze the ball or block. Exhale, lower the arms down and the spine down. And layer all the way to that base scoop. Tail in. Okay, the tail really feels in now. So inhale, lift up the hips, bring your arms overhead. Not required to do these movements, right? You don't have to follow the same exact pattern with your arms. And then exhale, spine goes down. Now find another one of these. Continue on, take one more. Lift up your hips, feel the arms moving back. And can you keep the hips lifting and the thigh squeezing into the ball or the block? Now with that strong balance in your pelvis, you're going to lower your spine back. That's where it tends to be is in the back. And then we're gonna bring our knees in. And if you've got the ball, you're gonna squeeze it, right? You can feel the inner leg tone when you squeeze the ball, feet off the bolster. And then remove the ball or block and carefully push the bolster to the right side yard of your mat. And then we go right into the right leg down, left leg crosses over to the bolster. If you would like a ball at the sacrum, that can be an anchor. And then I like to add the sand over the top of my, yeah, my exterior hip. So you might find that exterior sand helps the, the kind of the interior settle. Yeah, just place that sand there and I'll move the left arm open. Yeah, there you are. Just let your chest widen. Let your head turn. Yeah, and if the sand feels too impactful um, and you're kind of squirrely, you know, wanting to shift out of the pose, this might be a time to, to change the, um, the hip crossover choice. So you don't have to have your sand. You can use the uh, bolster under your leg. You can go without the bolster. You choose. But let your head roll to the left to the leg that's crossing over where it came from and relax your breath.
you know, can you let your belly feel like it is trying to twist to the left side with the arm open? So feeling that kind of association, that dissection of from your hip transfer with the sand to the right, the leg goes to the right, and that dissection of the midsection, right, turning to the left. And then finally, let the body weight go. Just let it be. Head turns back center. Move the ball aside. And I want you to get to the second side as swift as you can. But of course, you have to consider your body parts absorbing the pose that you just did. So. You don't want to be too drastic about a move, but you want to keep focused on this area. So I'm going to recommend that you move the sand and tuck the knees to your chest right away so that the back can absorb and so keep softening. So it's a pretty full knee to chest. Now when I move the bolster to the left side, I can reach to the bolster um, handle. That makes it a lot easier. When I move it to the left, I'm going to first get a feel of that tucked knee, stretch the back. And then as I move my feet up, I'm going to stretch the left leg straight down and then try that twist of the right leg over to the left. But I want to keep my spine straight and then I cross the leg over. So it's really going to be my lower thoracic that moves. And then I take my sand to the, I actually like the ball first and then add the sand. I like that anchor. So it's up to you. If you don't have a ball you're using, it doesn't matter. And you've done it many times in your life with that one, so you will probably get along. So you put that ball there, if you're using that at the sacral kind of basin, and then you turn your head to the right. Sometimes the organic way of getting into this is the best option versus a lot of, um, instructional kind of designating movements. So feel how the left um, side of the waist is down, right? And that right hip stretches over, but then you're trying to move from that left side of the waist over to the right to twist. So give a few more moments. This is our final pose, right? Before our, our last inversion. So let the weight of your head turn to the right. Breathe slow. You'd be as considerate to the lower back. So there's naturally an arch. Naturally, you're going to feel the arch in the lumbar. That's what we want. And you can feel the front of the core of the body, the base of the belly, have that has that nice amount of tone and movement with breath. Now where the left arm goes is anywhere. It could be on the right leg, encouraging that weight into the thigh, that distribution of circulation into the hip, which is what it is. Okay, now as we start to lower down that sand on that right leg over, we're going to keep it close by because we'll use it soon enough. And then I move the ball if it's there. And I want you to bring your knees in and actually take a few seconds here with your back lengthening and let the legs swing back. If you're comfortable rolling up to sitting from here, take it here, roll up, and then take a couple blocks to the second height, setting second in front of you, set two blocks on the second height, and then a bolster across and a blanket on there too. Okay, so I put my legs on top. I rest the backs of the legs all the way through the calves and kind of feel that energy of um, this position, right? This is kind of a semi-boat pose, isn't it? It's semi-boat. It's a semi-boat. 
So if I'm here and I have my knees kind of perked up, when I gradually lower down, I could put my sand on my shins. If you feel so inclined to do it, do it. Just know you're gonna be responsible to get your sand off. It's kind of nice to have it. I try to keep my spine lowering down. And if I wanna use my sand here, I could also put it here across my, uh, my rib intersection. So as I lower down my back of my head, I have my blanket, I'm gonna roll it up at my neck. That feels very comfortable for my jaw. So a little bit of a tube. We got all the way here to this spot in the class. Very good. And then the arms are resting either by your sides or they're on the belly. So let the bones center back. Situate yourself so the neck is comfortable. It does not have to be like this with the blanket. It could be flat. So find that support that's right now. And then where the arms are spending their energy softening through the fingertips, feel the flow of breath as it merges in through the nose into the brain. And if you feel that's where it goes, so it's truly going in the body, but sometimes we breathe and we create tension up into our, our actual brain in our thoughts. So feel if you can use your breath to flow into your body. So the belly lifts with the breath. The lungs move. So you're feeling the breath moving into the lungs, sweeping the lungs on the out breath. There's so many areas you can factor in consciousness right now. Maybe the best is to just breathe and be and let go. It's returning the body to a state of peace. A state of conscious breathing. Now, after you honestly center for a bit, about a minute, notice the feet just floating. So the heels are resting, no pressure on the legs as far as the feet go, right? The legs are resting. They might have sand, but they are in a restful mode. And bring your hands so they unite together over the chest, interlace the fingers, push the hands inside out over to the ceiling and then stretch them back and feel that overhead thorough motion. Feel the arch. Now feel if you try to get flat or if you can have a natural arch. I want you to try to create the arch. Good, now when you let go of the grip of the fingers, you're gonna set the arms back down. And if you have sand on your ribs, you move it away. If you have sand to your shins, you wanna be careful here. My hands are beside my hips. And then I'm gonna slide the, the feet right to the edge of the bolster and then bring my knees in. This could be a nice strengthener for your core, especially that slide into your chest, okay? And then you can hold this for a moment with that shin, sandy shins, I like to call this one. Sandy shins, All right? And get a feel of the back stretching. And then you let the sand slough off. You might wiggle a little right to left, let your head nod, and then come around to sitting up. Take a moment to unite or focus. And especially now, a day still working in the Zoom land. Take the hands and rest them on the lap and feel that spinal column, feel the columnar band from the low back of the waist, the kidneys, and that kind of juts up into the structure into the spine. 
and feel when the shoulders lift up on an inhale, feeling them shrug, and then roll them back and then feel how they move down. Take a few of those rolls, shoulders up, roll them down. Shoulders lift, there you go, and roll them back. Move the chest open, feel that sternum, that stretching out through the collarbones with that presence of sitting up. And then let the hands elevate up in front of the heart space, feel that simple band of the ribs and bow into your heart center. And surrendering here with a common breath, uniting our focus, honoring this life force, inhale. And with exhalation, bowing into the space behind your heart. Namaste. Thank you. Oh.